Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is all about the striker versus wrestler matchup. We've seen it a lot in the UFC lately. They love making those matchups, but I'm biased, so I'm gonna give us strikers five of the best strategies you can use to avoid being taken down or being dominated on the ground. All right, in today's episode, we're talking about the striker versus grappler matchup. We've seen it so much in the UFC lately that we need to discuss it. And me being a striker, I'm gonna help my fellow strikers avoid being taken down. So I'm gonna give you five of the best tips and strategies I feel will keep you safe, keep the fight on the feet so you can get the win. All right, so the first thing, one of the most important things, I believe, is using your feints, okay? So the wrestler obviously is looking for level changes, right? Matt's gonna try to get in. but if I don't know what he's trying to do, right, I need to, I need to faint. And as soon as I see that level change, after I faint, I move my feet, right? I'm not going to faint and stay there when I see him drop in his level. So I have to kind of faint into one. It's going to see him try to see if he's trying to get underneath my punches, right? Or two, see if he's scared of my punches. Because if I faint and he evades, okay, I'm good. I, I'm going to keep him guessing and being scared to kind of come in by constantly fainting. But you know, when I faint, look at my position. I'm not fainting really high because at this point, I don't want to give him my legs. So when I'm fainting and I'm playing on the outside, look at my hip position. I'm ready to sprawl if I need to. I'm ready to pull my leg and to evade. And even here, my hands are loose, right? When I'm fainting, I keep this hand loose. So if Matt goes in, at least I can create a frame. And one of those, we call it the frame and slide here, one of the best to do it in the UFC is Israel Adesanya. So he faints a lot. As soon as he comes in, he slides with it. Boom, and he can attack off of that. So using the frame, sliding out, it just allows you to see the level change a little bit more. The biggest problem what strikers do is they stand really tall in their stance, which is a big mistake in MMA, because one, I, I don't have option to exit. My hips are too in, right? I don't have, even if here, if Matt shoots, I have the option of smacking with my hips and then shooting my sprawl. I have more stability in the ground this way, okay? So making sure our hip position is right while we're fainting. Now, the other thing we want to start doing now, which is point two, is trying to evade with stance switches, okay? So what happens now, if I just sit here and faint and I leave my leg, they might go grab the single and now I'm having to defend, get off, push off, do my thing. So I wanna avoid that to begin with, okay? So even when I'm fainting, boom, part two is I'm gonna start backstepping my feet. And even when I'm fainting here, I pull my legs back. I'm constantly giving different stances. I don't wanna give him an easy single leg. I don't want him to be able to just grab my leg from the outside. So by constantly fainting and switching legs this way, right? As soon as he goes to grab my leg, boom, bang. See how I can backstep, create my space a little bit more effectively. Too many times people try avoiding leaving and exiting this way, but when I exit, the leg is still there. And if they chain their wrestling together, they're gonna to be able to take me down. Or when, they, when do you, wrestlers usually shoot, okay? If you look at the octagon, you see that little extra line, right? They call it the, the, the takedown line. So if I get to that point of the line, you know they're fainting and they're level changing. So I need to start moving my feet. So as soon as I start evading, as soon as I start seeing that I'm a few feet, I need to start moving and angling right away, okay? So evading with back steps and then circling laterally is your key. Even if you back step this way and you only, they're gonna keep coming forward, press you against the cage and now you're wall fighting. So one, what I'll do is maybe one pull, two pull, and then I try to circle out right away because they're coming in straight most of the time, okay? So I need to stay off that cage. Now, the third point, which is to me, one of the most important, okay? And that's occupying space. Now. What does it mean by occupying space? Is if I keep my hands pinned, it is so easy and so safe for Matt to come in on any grab, any clinch, it's nothing. So what I wanna do is I wanna put some missiles in between, right? So if I'm here now, occupying, right? It's a little bit more difficult for Matt to wanna come in. And look at my jab angle, right? I'm not jabbing up here because if he goes, he's underneath that hand. That's the last thing I want. So even my jabs, I might jab to the head, jab to the body, and I'm playing. So even just probing here, makes it difficult for Matt to come in. Now, I like to probe with my rear hand as well, right? Obviously, I, I gotta be cautious for counters, but I'm nice and long, right? I'm not trying to basic, I'm not trying to hit him. I'm just occupying the space. So, 
No, I'm not demoing. This is where I want to be here. Okay? I don't even want to touch him. If I touch him already, he's going to try to grab my hand, grab my wrist, try to, you know, two on one, call the ties. He's going to, he wants to grab my neck. He wants to grab a wrist. He wants to grab my leg. I, I don't want him to touch me. So I need to make sure I'm occupying. Now, some of my other occupying, the straight punches keep them from coming in, right? Coming forward and backwards. But I want them to think twice from going down. So what do I do? I got to occupy with my knee and my uppercut, right? So every so often, I'm not trying to hit it, but hey, think about it. It's coming. Okay, maybe I throw some front kicks even here bringing up my leg So I'm occupying this space here because this space here is where he's gonna try to come down He's gonna try to grab the single if he shoots the double I got to watch both my legs So I need to occupy that space which is very important now, okay for this next this next point Number four, it's, you have to have confidence doing this one, okay? So number four might not be for everybody. Now, what number four is, is pressure fighting with hand control, okay? That is one that takes confidence. And most people want to move and evade, but sometimes pressuring the wrestler is going to make it harder for them to take you down, right? And if I do it properly and strategically, if I just pressure up here with no hands control, I'm done. So even when I'm pressuring, I'm occupying space. See, right away, I'm controlling the hands a little bit. But I don't want to just stand here and hold the hands. I'm constantly pressuring him, OK? Mixing in here. I can be pressuring here. I want to keep connected and pressing them backwards. A lot of wrestlers need to come forward. They want to get that overhand into coming in. You got to avoid them from doing that. By their forward pressure is what they want. So by constantly pushing them backwards, you're good. So when I'm pushing backwards, I could hand frame if I want, right? I'm going to stay here and move them backwards. Or I might keep fainting, and they might move back naturally. So I'm going to keep coming here. I'm going to keep punching. And I want them to keep moving back, right? So by them constantly moving back, even if he goes to shoot after, boom. They're, they're too busy. They don't have enough power in the shot, right? They want that little bit of that push to get in. But by them doing this, moving backwards, you know, very hard for them. The, the key thing to this, though, is you've got to keep the pressure. What a lot of wrestlers want is they want you to attack. They want you to get overconfident, right? Why? Because what happens, say I'm pressuring Matt and I start swinging this way, he's going right underneath, and that's what they want. So what a lot of wrestlers will do is they'll hit you first, boom, boom, boom. They'll back up, make you get aggressive to throw, and then look, I end up on my back, right? I'm getting taken down. So the idea is don't overthrow, okay? So you don't get taken down and you don't get underneath, but you have to keep them moving backwards. And it takes a little bit more confidence. It takes a little bit more understanding in the wrestling because now you're connected. They can try to duck under you. They can grab. But still, moving backwards, you're easier to break. Your sprawls will be a little bit more effective because they don't have the power. So it's a more higher level, more confident strategy. Now, even with this hand fighting, this is the fifth point I wanted, is avoiding as strikers. We like that tie clinch, OK? But the problem in MMA is that's not, if I'm fighting a wrestler, that's not the position I want. If I get here, it's very nice that I could knee, right? Now, could this work? Yes, because if Matt goes to shoot under me, I use my elbows as a frame and go, right? But the other problem with here, what strikes do I have? Even if I go to knee, a lot of wrestlers will grab this leg and then boom, you know? Knee tap me, I'm done, I'm on the ground at that point. So I need to be careful from the knees. Now what else they're going to do from this position, they might pop my elbows up and then go underneath. Now I have nothing. I can't get an underhook to be able to survive. I can't clinch at that point. As soon as he gets under my elbows and he gets that body lock, I'm gone for the ride, OK? So what I suggest is not closing the hands. This is what we call open clinching. So if we are going to engage in a clinch, I always say I have the collar type, but I like to have the bicep control at least. So even if Matt tries to go in, grab, I can still push here. I'm more connected when I have the open guard. I can fight the hands a little bit, okay? Even with the open guard, right, and he tries to go get a body lock on, you know, I could still move here. I can still be a little bit more effective and in control of their body if I play with an open clinch, okay? As soon as I go in here, I'm going to get my knee grab, taken down off balance, or boom, I'm gone, right? And that's the one thing you want to avoid, letting that wrestler put their hands together for that body lock. I mean, you can defend the single, 
those are okay, but as soon as they get that double, you're going for that ride. So still, you have to practice defending the single leg takedown, breaking it off, creating your space. There's still more to it, but these five strategies are at least gonna put you in a position before they even grab the single leg, keep you safe, keep your distance, and at the end of the day, we want to be able to pick them apart without getting taken down. And to me, these are the five best strategies. All right, hope you like this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and make sure you support the channel sponsors. We have Hayabusa by going to hayabusaflight.com, perfect sports nutrition. I also got 20% off for you guys using the code bazooka. 20. And last but not least, we have bazookatraining.com, where for only $9.99 per month, you get full curriculum from me with over 200 archived videos at this point now. And every single Monday, you get four brand new videos. Home videos, you need zero equipment. You have a bag, whether you have a water bag or a hanging bag, I got full curriculum for you. We have sparring drills and tutorials every Monday, four videos, 200 video archive, and you get to select what you want to work. If you're having trouble with your knees, search knees, all your videos. If you have no equipment at home, go to home workers. You have a bag, go to bag worker. You have a partner sparring drills. It's endless curriculum. Here on YouTube, I give you the concepts, but if you want the full workouts and how it goes together in the whole system, bazooka training. Dot com. All right, we'll see you next time at here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Share with your friends, not with your opponents. I take that back. Share with your opponents because we need some more subscribers here. All right, we'll see you next time. Welcome to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA Online Training. I'm Bazooka Joe Valtellini, the owner here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over the past year, I've designed and created a website to teach Bazooka curriculum at home and across the world. The purpose of this website is for you to one, hit your fitness and health goals, all while learning world-class martial arts instruction from me. The beautiful thing about this website, it's geared for all levels. So if you're learning martial arts for the first time as a beginner, we help you progress into the bigger stages. And if you're a pro fighter, guess what? We have different fight concepts for you to improve your tool set and your skills in the ring or cage. As the fastest rising kickboxing world champion and a lifelong martial artist with over 30 years of experience, I've been able to combine my passion for martial arts and teaching to create this website. This website's gonna give you some of the tricks, secrets, and inside look at some of the training I use to win my world title. Once you subscribe to this site, you're gonna be getting weekly training videos and tutorials that you can do from anywhere. The sections are broken up into three parts. The first is bag workout. So if you have a bag at home or at your gym, you can use these workouts to supplement your training. The second is at home workouts. A lot of us don't have the room for a bag or a bag in general, so these workouts are for no equipment needed and you can do them anywhere. And finally, the tutorial section. If you're having any problems with a specific technique or fight concept that's covered in any of the workouts, go to the tutorial section, learn the technique, and then go back to the workout, and this time, do it with proper technique. One of the added benefits once you subscribe is the forum section, where you can get a more personalized experience where you can ask questions, and I'll be able to go in there and answer them. It's all about building a team and a community of martial artists helping each other grow. So subscribe now to get access to all the videos plus more so you can be part of the squad here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.